Hi, I'm Kevin Harrington, an original shark from Shark Tank. Ultimate Bundles connects you with the best teachers online. leave here with actionable steps to save money for those things that you really want without being extremely frugal. So number one, what that is for those of you that haven't heard that term before, it stands for specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely goal. So have you ever said, I wish I could save more. I want to save for a new car. I need to save for retirement. Raise your hands. Whenever we create specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, timely goals, it can't be just a generic, I wish I could save more, right? I wanna save for a new car, I need to save for retirement. Yes, uh, I'm sure that you say that and you want to do that, but when we're talking about goal setting, we really wanna make it specific. So of course we wanna pay off debt, but if you just say, well, I wanna pay off debt someday, that someday will never come, you've gotta put a timeline on it and you've gotta say how much debt. You know, timely could be, five years or less. Once you start getting past five years, that's really more of a long-term goal, which is great too if you put it on paper and make it specific and measurable, but then you wanna make smaller micro goals to get there. Otherwise, like five years from now, if you have a 10 year goal, you won't have made any progress. So whatever your big goal is, you need to break it down into smaller goals. Um, I really like yearly goals and then quarterly goals and kinda how you're gonna get there from month to month. Otherwise we lose track and it, and it turns into a someday goal, right? Number two, designing a financial blueprint. Okay, so when you wanna save money for something, you really need to make a clear, realistic plan to get there. So that's where the, the smart goals come into play as well. And I have found that on average, um, when people um, follow the budget, they save on average of $500 a month just with that. Just with that because what happens is they see where their money is actually going and it's not going to where they want it to go. But if you're not putting it down on paper, if you're not looking at the numbers, if you're avoiding the numbers because you feel shameful, you feel guilt, you are tired and overworked and you feel like you don't have enough time, the numbers start to get away from you. If you're not like actually looking at the numbers and creating a plan, your money will just fly away. Like you won't, it won't go to what you want. So creating this spending plan, this realistic budget, your money will go to what you want it to go to. Otherwise, it's just gonna go to whatever. So when you're making a budget, you wanna write down your income, your regular monthly expenses, uh, your other expenses that are like food, gas, clothes, uh, kid activities, anything you need to save for like vehicle maintenance, house maintenance, uh, vacation, things like that. Um, just things that don't come up every single month, but you need to set money aside for it. Then what is left over is what goes towards your debt and maybe like your bigger um, savings goals. So that's where the magic happens and that's where a lot of people find this $500 a month without doing anything else, without saving or without um, working another job, without like clipping coupons, so when you create a clear and realistic plan, you'll see what you actually have left over to save with. I know a lot of you said you'd feel relieved, but I hear people every day tell me that even though the money's still tight, they may still have a lot of debt, once they actually face the numbers, like that's a huge weight off their shoulders and they feel relieved just because they have a plan instead of um, what's going on in their mind because you know that we when we don't actually look at the numbers we make things a way bigger deal in our mind um, we may think that we're way broker than we really are and things like that when you're not actually facing the numbers so once you have your kind of your goals what you want to accomplish your plan to accomplish that the next thing you may need to do is cut expenses if saving is something you want and it's important to you then make it a priority over something less important in your plan so you kind of have to really sit and think about what your priorities are and maybe even make visuals of what you're saving for have it in your wallet or have it where you're going to see it all the time in your house so that you can constantly remind yourself of what your long-term goals are because if it's just like a someday goal it'll never come and you're never going to save the money you're going to keep spending money on amazon and online shopping because it's so easy right so we have to set up 
uh, barriers. We have to remind ourselves of what our goals are. And most people are visual. So if you have some visuals that you can put up around your house and your wallet, like I said, um, to remind yourself of those goals, it will make it easier. So some of the things that you can to think about to uh, cut expenses. So are there any subscriptions that you're not using or that you could really live without, even if it's temporary? Remember, this doesn't have to be forever, but if you do that with a couple different things, it'll add up. So it may feel like, oh, well, that's only $10. That's only $20 a month, but it adds up throughout the year. So you really just have to think about, is that a priority? And if it is fine, like spend money on things that bring you joy. We don't want to be miserable through this process, right? Um, but think about things that maybe you're not using or that you can live without temporarily while you focus on these other goals that are a higher priority. So meal planning, we save like $600 a month just meal planning, being intentional, stop eating out. Another thing you can do is no spin challenges. So I love doing no spin challenges. And I always get questions about this because people love hard and fast rules. There are no hard and fast rules with no spin challenges. They are whatever you want it to be. Like if you want to do an, um, a no fast food for the week challenge, do it. Like no fast food for the week. If you wanna do it for a month, do it for a month. If you wanna do it for just the weekend, do it for the weekend. If you wanna do no shopping on Amazon for the entire month, like it's literally whatever you want or need it to be, um, but reward yourself at the end. Maybe make some visuals so you can track how you're doing, remind yourself of your goal. Um, it can be whatever you want it to be. Um, some people do like, a whole month of not buying anything, but that obviously takes preparation and you'll have to buy food and certain things that you'll need for the month ahead of time. So there's a lot more planning involved in that. Um, but start small, just do like, I'm not gonna eat out for the week. I'm not gonna do Starbucks for the week. Um, I'm not going to shop on Amazon for the week, whatever, just start with like a week. Um, then maybe then you can do two weeks and then you could do a month. So just kind of build up to it, play around with it, um, do figure out what works for you and what you need to work on and create a challenge out of that. Another thing you can do is do an inventory of what you already have and plan your meals around that. So that was talking about the uh, meal planning. So the other thing I do for meal planning that really helped me stick to the budget was shopping with a list. So create a meal plan, figure out exactly what you need before you go to the store. That really cuts down on the impulse shopping at the grocery store. Um, it cuts down on all the snacks and all that kind of stuff as well. And of course, that's really easy to do if you're doing the online shopping now. Shop with a calculator. So this is really big. This applies to really anything. It doesn't have to be just meal planning. Use a calculator while you shop so you're not surprised when you get up to the register. And you'll be surprised at what you decide to put back. Shop with cash instead of a card. And so that way you don't have that mental backup of, oh, well, I'll just get it. I know it's not in the budget, but I can swipe a card. Shop with cash and make yourself stick to it. So a list, calculator, cash, those three things helped me save a ton of money. Number four, ways to make extra money. So. Upwork, Freelancer, Fiverr. Those are just three of many, 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 many websites that you can sign up to work online. You get paid depending on your experience and what you accept as a rate. So it's usually per word, it can be per project, um, but it's, uh, really pretty easy. There's also other jobs on there like customer service, answering emails, data entry. So if you can use a spreadsheet, if you can use Google Sheets, like don't sell yourself short on your skills because I see that a lot. People think, well, I don't know anything about that. You can learn, you can Google it. Um, I've spoken to so many people that did uh, jobs like this that paid off all this debt. And you know what? They just figured it out along the way. They would look on Upwork or Freelancer or whatever, see what the job was, and they would Google how to do it. So you can find so many at-home jobs now uh, that you can pretty much, as long as you have good internet, you can write fairly well in English. Um, some of these you don't necessarily have to. Um, you know, some people hire people overseas and in different countries too. So I know there's probably people from all over the world here as well. So it doesn't have to be just the United States or Canada. Like uh, some of these jobs are from all over the world. And join some local Facebook groups. So blogging groups, just search like 
blogging for beginners, things like that. Uh, freelance, there's freelance writers groups, there's virtual assistance groups. Join some of those groups, get to know people, ask questions, um, things like that. So saving money is much easier if you're also managing your money. So like we talked about tonight, making a written plan, doing your budget, finding ways to save money and ways to make extra money. Because really what it boils down to is if you're really tight on your budget, you have to cut expenses and or increase your income. It really is that simple. And creating a budget and doing those other things helps you do that.